Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Jessica. I'm an engineering at Watershed. We are a climate tech company building uh, software for companies like Walmart, DoorDash, Airbnb, BlackRock to run their climate programs. So this is things like measuring their carbon footprints, reporting on it, um, and then ultimately doing reductions on it. And I'm here today, today to talk about um, how much we love ducks at Watershed um, and in particular how we use DuckDB in production at Watershed. So the core, uh, one of our core data sets at Watershed is carbon footprint data. And broadly, this is basically monthly time series data with a bunch of different dimensions on it, like location, business unit, other categorization. And our main user need with this carbon footprint data is actually just like fast business analytics. So you can imagine grouping by group, uh, acquiring emissions, grouping it by category and by year. So you can like look at trends over time, then digging into subcategories. And so when we think about serving these needs and like what our data looks like, the carbon footprint data ends up being what I like to call medium sized data. So about 12% of our customers have footprints that at their highest granularity have over a million rows. Um, our largest customer is actually over 17 million rows now. This is out of date as of this week um, that we store as a parquet file about 750 megabytes. Um, so our brand new chonker. Um, and what's interesting about this kind of data is that all fits on one machine pretty like easily, but it's non-trivial to query performantly. And before we were actually using Postgres to uh, basically do our business analytics queries. This is challenging for several reasons. Um, it was the vast, vast majority of our Postgres database size, which just made maintenance very challenging. Uh, migrations were really hard, particularly when you had to scan the entire table to like change the type of a column some or something. And just generally arbitrary analytic queries don't scale. We were adding a bunch of indexes, but still seeing like as our customer data size was growing, it just being challenging. And so that's where DuckDB comes in. Um, our users are all operating in the browser and our web app um, and our carbon footprint parquet files are stored in Google Cloud Storage. And so when um, a user is accessing some page in our app, maybe they're asking for carbon grouped by country, which we'll send to the server as a request. Um, the server will then translate this into a SQL query um, and look for the uh, path of the footprint parquet file um, in cloud storage and sign that URL so that we can then uh, our DuckDB server, which is our hosted DuckDB, our, like, our own hosted DuckDB, can then go make this query. Um, and one of the things that we were seeing when we first tried this out is that like the DuckDB query like was actually much slower than we were expecting it to be. And this is because uh, we just had to transfer all of those bytes from cloud storage to our DuckDB server. Even though the DuckDB query itself was very, uh, was very fast, it was just that byte transfer that was slow. Um, and so we introduced a byte cache, um, which basically means that two queries that run back to back on similar data, even if they're, even if they're different, the second one will take advantage of the byte cache and downloading those bytes uh, to disk on the DuckDB server um, as our caching. We like this for a lot of reasons, uh, mostly because it's fast. Um, uh, in some of our benchmarking, uh, we found that it was around 10 times faster than Postgres, uh, our Postgres um, database with a lot of indexes on a comparable data size. And we're achieving sort of our, our P99 data size. We're basically looking for all of our data to be able to serve um, to serve our analytic queries in on the order of milliseconds, so like less than a second. And so it works for that. Um, it was very exciting to drop the giant Postgres table. It was a big migration effort. It was very satisfying to see that storage space go down. Um, the byte caching means that we don't have to do as much ad hoc caching. Like we're doing a lot of different sort of analytical queries on it. And so we don't have to think about query caching, which is really nice. And we like using Parquet directly um, using DuckDB. Uh, we actually also use water, uh, DuckDB in a bunch of other ways at Watershed. Um, one of the other main use cases is just our, our data pipeline when we're converting activity data into carbon footprint data. It's a bunch of different steps. And so this is a very different use case than the um, fast analytics where we're basically writing a bunch of things. And so we've really appreciated all of the write speed ups that have come um, in recent versions. Uh, we also have a tool that lets you query any Parquet file that Watershed knows about, which is a useful debugging technique. Um, and, in, and our DuckDB servers uh, see about 75,000 queries per day. So y'all have 75,000 queries in production through us every day, which is exciting. Um, yeah, thank you. We'll be around um, later if you want to say hi.